Welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. After decades of research on lifting weights, we finally have the first ever study on this. Cheat reps versus strict reps for muscle hypertrophy. Proponents of strict technique may hypothesize cheating via external momentum disperses tension to other muscle groups and possibly lowers activation of the main muscles we're trying to target. But is this true? 25 previously untrained individuals were recruited. They trained unilateral dumbbell curls and pushdowns two times per week for eight weeks. One arm was randomly assigned to cheat on all repetitions, while the other arm used strict technique on all repetitions. To cheat with the curl, participants were instructed to swing the weight up and use external momentum to lift the weight as many times as possible until they reached failure. With the pushdown, they used external momentum and were permitted to flare the elbows and use leg drive until they could no longer perform more repetitions. As for the strict reps, the curl was performed with a stationary body position without any swinging. They simply flexed the elbow until they could no longer complete another strict rep. The same applies to the pushdown, an upright torso with movement just occurring at the elbow until they could no longer extend their elbow down with strict technique. The study's supplementary material provides instructional videos that the subjects saw. Every session, four sets of 8-12 to 12 reps were performed, and as we mentioned, those reps were taken to failure for both conditions. Loads were adjusted across time to stay in this rep range. Regular viewers will know this research design of having every subject train both conditions is becoming more common in the literature. There are always a few critiques of this design I see pop up, so I'll quickly address them. People can have one arm stronger than the other, but remember we're not looking at the results of one person. We're looking at the average results of two conditions which typically have a similar number of dominant arms. Some people think that training one arm can directly cause growth in the opposite arm, but this isn't quite true. What is true is that training one arm can cause strength gains in the opposite arm, so this study design is not appropriate for measuring strength but it is acceptable for measuring hypertrophy. There are also key advantages to this study design. Having 25 subjects each train both conditions is like having 50 subjects assigned to train either one of the conditions. In fact, it's even better since by having the same subjects in both conditions, differences in genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors are less likely to confound the findings. Muscle thickness of the elbow flexors, consisting of the biceps and brachialis, and triceps were measured at 55% and 65% regions. It was found that increases in all regions were similar between both conditions. Thus, as the authors describe, the use of external momentum neither helped nor hindered hypertrophy of the target muscles. These findings are truly fascinating and may surprise a number of you. So is that the death of strict reps for hypertrophy, since they provided no growth advantage over cheating? Not necessarily. Many suggest there are other concerns with cheating, safety and tracking progression. Before critically analyzing these two points, in the spirit of scientific accuracy, we must not let a few key considerations slip our minds. The authors mention it was tricky to standardize form with the cheat reps, so not all subjects cheated identically. It is not implausible that certain cheating styles are worse than others, but this will be tricky to establish. Remember this study wasn't designed to examine cheat reps as an intensity technique. What I mean is you can perform strict reps but then start to cheat as you approach failure to perform more total reps than you could otherwise. Whether this has any worthwhile advantage remains to be tested. Note, cheat reps aren't the only way to push past typical failure. As the quality and quantity of research we're getting nowadays is increasing, I am optimistic we'll see valuable research on these methods. Besides that, science is ultimately a cumulative process, relying on multiple studies to build a comprehensive understanding of a given topic and get us closer to the truth. The single study at hand just involved untrained individuals training only their biceps and triceps for 8 weeks. Things could be different with any one of these variables altered. 
Some may be tempted to completely ignore this study since it's on untrained individuals, since they claim untrained individuals grow equally from anything under the sun. While it is undeniably true we cannot be certain findings on untrained individuals will extend to trained individuals, it is not true untrained individuals grow equally from everything. The literature is abundant with examples of untrained individuals growing more with one thing over another. A few of our videos illustrate this. So studies on untrained individuals are certainly not useless and at the end of the day, it is an informative data point suggesting similar effects between cheats and strict reps. I should also reveal that none other than Jeff Nippard has stated he'll be involved with a cheat rep study on trained individuals. So what about safety and tracking progression? 30 individuals were originally recruited, but 5 dropped out. However, none of these 5 dropped out due to injury. As the authors describe, we don't have strong direct evidence that using external momentum increases injury risk, but absence of evidence is not necessarily evidence of absence. Whether things would change with a longer time frame or more subjects is a question left unanswered for now. As for progress, the cheat condition unsurprisingly trained with heavier weights, but both conditions progressed throughout the intervention. That said, the complication when cheating is it's difficult to untangle how much of your progression is driven by you just cheating more. When maintaining strict technique, you have more confidence lifting heavier for the same number of reps is due to you getting stronger, which is assurance you're making gains. Cheat rep proponents may say they're uninterested in untangling what's causing them to lift heavier loads if they're fundamentally seeing no less growth. Ultimately, visual changes over the long term and the general notion that they'll eventually be lifting a load that would have been impossible for them to cheat with back in the day is all that's needed. I think that is a fair perspective, but I know there are many who prefer consistent assurance of progress provided with strict technique. Some individuals thinking outside the box may consider this as a paper on training at long muscle lengths in disguise. Take the normal biceps curl. When cheating and swinging the weight up, you likely increase the tension seen earlier in the curl, where the biceps are at a longer length, compared to using a stricter technique with a standard tempo. Since growth was similar between both, you may suggest increasing the demands at longer muscle lengths isn't advantageous. However, since we do have other variables in the mix, and it's difficult to know precisely how much tension differed at longer lengths, I wouldn't consider it an ideal study for answering if challenging muscles at longer lengths benefits hypertrophy. I'll also add that as described in our previous video, I believe we should divide the muscle length literature into different categories, as this may tell us when and where training muscles at longer lengths can be beneficial. In this case, changing where the muscle is challenged the most in the motion belongs to the resistance challenge category. We don't have a lot of studies in this category, but the ones we do have fail to show any real benefit of making the exercise harder at longer muscle lengths anyway. Feel free to check out the video for more details. So can we say cheat reps are as good as strict reps? More evidence in a wider context and perhaps some kind of investigation of its safety is necessary before we can be sure. I still think it makes sense for stricter technique to be the default. But depending on how you feel, this study could loosen the strictness you may have towards your reps. It's likely not the end of the world if some degree of deviation and momentum creeps into your set. If you're searching for further guidance on programming to obtain your desired physique, it can be tricky and time-consuming. However, our high-quality partner, the Alpha Progression app, can help you generate an evidence-based training program that's 100% custom to your needs in less than 3 minutes. Simply specify the equipment you have, how often and how long you want to train for, and if you want to focus or neglect certain muscles. There are even advanced options to periodize your training and implement deloads. There are over a quadrillion input combinations on which your plan is based, and with the touch of a few buttons you can customize things further. Through analyzing your past performance, the app provides progressive overload recommendations during your workouts to help you continue making gains. 
the app automatically generates graphs that display your long-term progression, thereby saving you time from having to manually track your progression. The link in the comments and description gives you a two-week free trial of all the premium features. And if you like it and decide to go beyond, the link gives you 20% off a subscription. I truly believe the app is awesome and the reviews speak to this. Thank you for making it to the end. Feel free to check out another one of the videos at the House of Hypertrophy.